Okay, now let's talk about the 12 cranial nerves and we know what they do or what's their function uh, in the body. When it comes to the cranial nerves, these are just a set of 12 nerves that originate in the brain and each has a different function for sense or movement and you'll find that the function of the cranial nerves are sensory motor and some may have both functions. When it comes to the sensory cranial nerves, these they help a person to see, smell, and hear, among others. Apart from the motor cranial nerves, these ones they help control muscle movements in the head as well as in the neck and other body parts. And each nerve has a name that reflects each function and a number of uh, uh, and a number according to its location in the brain. That's why you find that we have cranial nerve one, cranial nerve two, uh, and so on. And you'll find, apart from that, we can now basically look at the nerves themselves. And the first cranial nerve, number one, is known as the olfactory nerve. When it comes to the olfactory nerve, this one transmits information to the brain regarding a person's sense of smell. And when a person inhales the fragrant molecules, for example, olfactory receptors within the nasal passage sends the impulse to the cranial, uh, to the cranial cavity which then travels to the olfactory bulb. And here you'll find that specialized olfactory neurons and nerve fibers, they meet with other nerves which passes into the olfactory tract. And the olfactory tract then, will tra uh, then travels to the frontal lobe and other areas of the brain that are involved with memory and notation of different uh, smells. Then apart from that, the next uh, cranial nerve number two is known as the optic nerve so the optic nerve is cranial nerve number two this one when it comes to the op optic nerve this one transmits information to the brain regarding a person's vision when light enters the eyes it hits the retina which contains rods and cones and these are photoreceptors that translate signals from light into visual information for for the brain Cones are located in the central retina and are involved with color vision. Rods are located in the peripheral retina and these are involved in non-color vision. And you find that these, uh, these photoreceptors carry signal impulses along nerve cells to form the optic nerve. Uh, and most of the fiber of the optic nerve crosses into a structure called the optic chiasm, chiasma. Uh, and then the optic tract projects to, uh, to the primary visual cortex in the uh, occipital lobe at the back of the brain. And the occipital lobe uh, is where the brain handles visual information. The cranial nerve number three is known as the oculomotor nerve, this particular one. When it comes to this particular nerve, this one helps control muscle movement of the eye. And the oculomotor nerve provides movement to most of the muscles that move the eyeball and the upper eyelid known as the uh, extraocular muscles. So the, the ocular nerve also helps with involuntary function of the eye such as the sphincter papilla muscle automatically constricts when the pupil, um, to, of the pupil rather to allow less light into the eyes when light is very bright. And when it is dark, the muscle relaxes to allow more light to enter the eye. So this is what it basically does. We can go to cranial nerve number four, which is known as um, trochlea. So this is cranial nerve number four, which is known as trochlear nerve. So the trochlear nerve is also involved in eye movement and the trochlear nerve like the oculomotor nerve originates in the midbrain. It powers the central lateral superior oblique muscle that allows the eye to point downwards and inwards. The fifth nerve is known as the trigeminal nerve. So the cranial nerve number five is known as the trigeminal nerve, this one here. So when it comes to the trigeminal nerve, this is the largest cranial nerve and has both motor and sensory functions. Its motor function helps a person to chew and clench the teeth and give sensation to muscles in the tympanic membrane of the ear. Its sensor, its sensor division has a three parts that connect to the sensory receptor site on the face. The first one is that the ophthalmic part of this particular trigeminal nerve 
gives the sensation to parts of the eye including the cornea mucosa in the nose and the skin of the um, the skin on the nose and the eyelid as well as the forehead and the, apart from that the trigeminal nerve also has its maxillary uh, attachment where it gives sensation to the middle third of the face sides of the nose upper teeth as well as the lower eyelids and finally the mandibular part also is uh, controlled by the trigeminal nerves giving sensation to the lower third of the face the tongue mucosa in the mouth and the lower teeth so you find that tri trigeminal ne neuralgia is one of the common disorders of the trigeminal nerve that can cause intense pain uh, and uh, intense pain on the face so that is about the trigeminal cranial nerve number five then we can go to the cranial nerve number six which is known as the abducens so the abducens is cranial nerve number six and this nerve helps control eye movement it helps uh, the lateral rectus muscle which is one of the extraocular muscles to turn the gaze outward the abducens uh, nerve starts in the pons of the uh, brainstem and this one enters uh, in the area which is called Dorelos canal and this travels through the cavernosa sinus and ends at the lateral rectus muscle within the bony orbit of the face of the face then cranial nerve number seven is known, is known as facial nerve so cranial nerve number seven is known as the facial <clears throat> the facial nerve the facial nerve also has both motor and sensory function the facial nerve is made up of four nuclei that serve different functions for example movement of the muscles that produce facial expression movement of the lacrimal submaxillary sub as well as submandibular glands the sensation of external ear as well as the sensation of taste the four nuclei originates in the pons and med medulla and join together to travel to the uh, genoculate uh, ganglion and you'll find that a common condition that affects this nerve the facial nerve is the bell's palsy and we, this is very common and causes paralysis on the side of the face and uh, possibly loss of sensation as well then cranial nerve number eight is known as the uh, vest, uh, vestibular cochlear nerve so the vestibular cochlear nerve this one is involved with the person's hearing and balance so the vestibular cochlear nerve contains two components and the first component is that this nerve helps the body sense changes in the position of the head with regards to gravity the body uses this information to maintain balance apart from that the cochlear nerve also helps with hearing specialized the uh, inner hair cells as well as the basilar membrane vibrate in response to sound and determine the frequency and magnitude of the sound then cranial nerve <clears throat> number nine this one is known as glossopharyngeal so glossopharyngeal cranial nerve number nine and the glossopharyngeal nerve this one uh, possesses both motor and sensory function and the sensory function of this nerve receives information from the throat tonsils middle ear and back of the tongue it is also involved with the sensation of the taste for the back of the tongue apart from that the motor part of this particular nerve divides uh, i mean division provides movement to the uh, style of pharyngus which is a muscle that allows the throat to shorten and widen and this basically controls or helps in swallowing so you find that the glossopharyngeal nerve starts in the medulla oblongata in the brain and leaves the skull through the jugular foramen which leads to the tympanic nerve then um, we can look at uh, cranial nerve number 10 so cranial nerve number 10 is known as the vagus nerve and this one has a range of function providing motor sensory as well as parasynthetic functions so when it comes to this nerve the sensory part provides sensation to the outer part of the ear the throat the heart abdominal organs it also plays a role in test sensation the motor part provides movement to the throat and soft palate apart from that the parasympathetic function regulates heart rhythms uh, innervates the smooth muscles in the airway lungs as well as gastrointestinal tract and the vagus nerve is the longest cranial nerve as it starts in the medulla oblongata and extends to the abdomen 
Cranial nerve number 11 is known as the accessory nerve. The accessory nerve provides motor function to the muscles of the neck. It controls the uh, stenocleidomastoid as well as trapezius muscles that allows the person to rotate, extend, and flex the neck and shoulders as well. So the accessory nerve separates in the spinal as well as cranial parts. And the spinal component starts in the spinal cord and travels into the skull through the foramen, uh, foramen magnum. From there, it meets the cranial component of the accessory nerve and it exits the skull along the internal carotid artery. And the cranial part of the accessory nerve combines with the vagus nerve. The last cranial nerve, which is cranial nerve number 12, is known as the hypoglossal. So the hypoglossal nerve is the motor nerve that supplies the tongue muscles. The hypoglossal nerve originates in the medulla. Disorders of the hypoglossal nerve can cause paralysis of the tongue, most often occurring in one side of the tongue. So this is about the 12 cranial nerves. Be sure to, uh, to subscribe on my YouTube channel for more tutorial videos at your DZ tutorial. And also follow on Facebook, share and uh, like the page. Uh, thank you so much. Till next time. Bye.